I'd like to bring to the stage Adrian Balicki and Peter Bacon. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here. Now, this panel is for you guys. I have questions, and I could talk to them all day, and I will. But I would much rather, I'm sure they'd much rather hear from you, so we have a microphone right over here. So please line up. We will take your questions. Someone's like very eager. You, you can get in line. I'm just going to ask a couple <laughs> quick questions, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to you guys. So, and thanks for being here and representing Starfleet. So. Yes, you look Appreciate amazing. That. You look amazing. So a couple questions for you guys, and they're not necessarily Orville related. Okay. Um, Adrienne, you were... Uh, oh, negative. I was <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Good to know. Well, okay. at least you're not positive. Okay. Because that'd be, that would be bad. Um, so you were Bobby Morse on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which you did an awesome job. Didn't she do an awesome job? Thanks, guys. I miss her. I love her. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but in the comic book, she was married to Hawkeye for Oh, time. no. I know. <laughs> I know West Coast Avengers, and I honestly, like, that was a big thing. I was like, why is she not with Hawkeye? Yeah. Why was she not in the movies? Yeah. That, that, Same. that was my, my question, you know. Did you know? And how do you think... Jeremy Renner different? was all for it. He was like, sure. But... Got to write your congressman. Like, get uh, the uh, petition exactly. going. Exactly. Y'all can get this done. I feel like it. Well, there's Let's like multi a multiverse, so you could be his wife in an alternate universe. So exactly. We, we can we can make this happen, can't we, folks? Yeah. Yes. You can do exactly. it. Exactly. See, so I mean, Bobby references it like once in one episode, and that's it. And that's. You're not better. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. no, I'm fine. I feel I feel good about it. It's cool. Let's we'll work on it. <laughs> now, Peter, you were on Shameless. No, I was not. <laughs> no, I was. I was. Yes. Um, that was fun. How is that different from being on a show like The Orville? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Chicago and space. <laughs> how long did uh, Shameless take to shoot? Oh, a lot less time than I was The Orville. Say, did. There's probably that. Um, no, but you know the funny thing is, is uh, I grew up in Chicago, uh, not too far from where we were shooting, um, and shooting in Chicago in. <sighs> neighborhoods that are in transition I will say like uh, gentrification um, but they, they use a lot of location and like a lot of houses and people still live in those houses and so uh, and then they also shoot on a sound stage in Los Angeles right and so there was a, a point where uh, I'm coming in the house and I forgot that we were not on a sound stage <laughs> and I went into these people's house uh, and they were sitting there watching a church program or like a, a game show, and I'm like, "Oh God, I'm so sorry." I just, because, but but it, it was it was uh, it's a unique way of shooting because because they're doing location sh like uh, uh, shooting, they're relying on people, you know, to rent out their houses, and um, some people are like, "Well, I'm I'll just sit over here, and you guys use my house," but it was. Uh, it was very startling. Those people were like, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, what am I doing in here? <laughs> I like, thought I was on the lot. But, um, what are you doing in here? No, but, you know, it, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to compare the two. They're just uh, very different. Mm -hmm. And um, I was making the transition. I will say I did an episode of uh, SEAL Team. No, no. Uh, SEAL Team between episode, uh, seasons one and two of the Orville. And I was absolutely horrible because um, there was he came no back mask to the show and literally said this he was like ah, I'm going to get fired I was but like you know but it was like the, it was a, it was a hard transition so um, you were wearing the mask I weren't I'm not no nothing to hide behind it was just me in a submarine um, but if you pay attention like the uh, the first episode of that run on shameless I had a mustache like, uh, because I was immediately going up to Toronto to shoot this project and I was playing a fireman 
and my dumbass thought that all firemen had mustaches, so I'm gonna grow a mustache. <laughs> and I get up to I get up to Toronto, and it's all the real reason. firemen, not one of them had a mustache. And I'm like, you are a douchebag. So, <laughs> uh, so then when I come back to Shameless, there's the mustache is gone. But anyway, I. <laughs> Apples and oranges. Th- uh, though it did appear in Orville. You had well, I had my way. I was like, this uh-huh. mustache is coming back, baby. Um, <laughs> no, it was great fun. It was great fun. You know, got my Tom Selleck on. Hey, look at you. <laughs> Spitting image. <laughs> oh, emphasis on spitting. Uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So what's it like? I mean, you, your first two seasons were were not with Hulu, and then you had this... It looks like you have a little bit bigger of a budget with the with the new season, which is phenomenal. If you haven't seen the new season, it is phenomenal, and the visuals are incredible. Thank you, guys. Thank you. But but shooting that season must have been difficult because COVID restrictions, and and it must have been. How was it different shooting that season compared to the previous? Well, I mean, definitely the scope felt massive mm-hmm. this season. Uh, Almost like endless. It was well, it was genuinely endless, but I mean, we shot that without COVID included. It was a year and a half to shoot the third season. So I mean, that's every episode was like a mini movie. I mean, yes, it took over a month to shoot <laughs> just one episode. So mm-hmm. it was it's pretty crazy. I'm also appreciating uh, Kali out there. Yeah, I know. Fantastic. I was like Jessica. <laughs> I was like Jess was supposed to be here. Jess. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't make it. Again, please come up to the microphone. I will continue with my questions, but please get in. Oh, do we have a someone crouched down? Rise, my friend. Rise. I'm very tall. It's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see how tall. Ooh. Oh, yeah, there you go. Tall. I told you. So, I told so you. Please tell us your name, where you're from, and then your question. My name's Keller. I'm from Connecticut. And I wanted to know kind of what you were talking about, too, is I know shows are usually shot out of order. How did COVID change your ability to keep up with what I'm supposed to be feeling at this time? What's been going on in the plot lately? Did that affect how you dealt with that? Or what did that look like? Oh, literally, I was like, Seth, um, what's happening in this episode? <laughs> Which what, episode what's Kelly doing? OK, cool. I was like, I can't keep up. I can't keep going back and re- you know, rereading things, because it was, it was just. No, it was, it was incredibly fragmented. Uh, we shot the like the third episode was the thing we started with, right? And ended with, and came back to, and, and the continuity. The continuity is, is awesome. <laughs> but we had to, like, uh, and it was literally like, okay, stand here, all right, move your shoulder like this much, and like tilt your head this because they had to match what we had shot a year. Well, and when we came back, Jessica was pregnant, so she actually wasn't there for the first, uh, what, (laughs) six months? Something like that? So we shot a lot of stuff without her, which was so weird, because we were on the bridge, we're getting everybody else's, you know. Coverage. Poor girl had to come back and get all of her shit, you know, like on that side, but. Yeah, in a matter of days, but like, yeah, we would be shooting pieces of episode two and then we're going to shoot pieces of episode six and then we're going to shoot it was bananas um and it was uh, a challenge to 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 try to keep the the emotional uh you just gravity could, of you, everything of, of consistent you know like to make it you know like flow together I, I honestly don't remember much of it because we just really just get there and like what are we shooting today and let me go back and like okay what happened before right right that was this episode oh no no that was this episode okay wait a minute wait what, who help you know what I mean? so it was, uh, it's actually been fun to watch because we're like oh oh that's right that happened I right. forgot right <laughs> oh, okay oh that's cool. what this episode was about I was oh. I was thinking something completely different that all came together um, okay. <laughs> but yeah I mean and like I feel like it was uh you know, a testament to our the, the the team and Seth and stuff like that. We had like uh, Dr. Larry Brilliant as our his sort of COVID go to guy. Genius. You know, genius. Like he, you know, was was a small, not smallpox that he was like. Yes, he was like one of the, uh, he, he came up with the vaccine. Yeah, so we had like a great support structure, um, and only I think two or three people out of like a couple hundred people over the span of months and months and months tested positive so it was very 
you know, there's not a, a lot of nose love going on. Like, <laughs> Six of, like, days a week. Oh my God, it's not. It's no good until I'm it's tearing. Nice. Okay, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. um, but they oh, kept in the us, beginning, they weren't gentle either. You yeah. know what I mean? That was like all up there. You got it. Do you got it? You got the vid. You got. I feel like eventually we're gonna lose our sense of smell. Like that's kind of what it felt like in the beginning. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, you know, it was we slogged through, and then the you know constantly uh, answering questions of when is it coming out? I'm like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I just work here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's happening We're just either. Trying to get it done. Be patient. It's coming. <laughs> um, and so, and like, they're also very big episodes. Moving to Hulu gave us another like. Well, we didn't have to be in the constraints of 48 minutes. Like so. Uh, is that a money? Is that money thing that you're doing? It's is that what that means? Yeah, it sure looks it. I, I I don't know what that. Oh, I didn't see. No, let me say. Um, wow. But yeah, no, it costs a lot more money. Um, and but they. It's too bad Seth doesn't have any of that. I know. So. Too bad Seth a broke ass bum. <laughs> Maybe after the show. <laughs> too bad. Too bad. <laughs> um, but no, I mean they he, they really put their foot in the cake, as it were. You know, to to step up like the redesigning the. The, the the ships and the suits and the and like really making more of a cine like like c cinematic cinematic uh, every every episode is a movie. Oh, I mean the first episode of season I feel like the first episode of this season season like New Horizons is like a total love l like love fest on of the ship like let's look at the ship this way let's, let's see the ship in the, like, the light this way let's see the ship underneath let's see the ship and it's really really cool because um, they really did like a lot of work redesigning and restructuring everything so um, but, you know. well, I'm glad you all were safe through that and glad that season 3 came out because there for a while it was mm, it's taken so long and everything was delayed but we're, yeah. we're glad to see it and glad to see it end well thank you thank you thank, thank you. you for watching you. hey gal hi Hair. Um, my name is Kami, and I'm from Connecticut. Kami. And I just wanted to know if you guys had a favorite episode of season three to shoot. Hmm. hmm. I, I guess it would be hard to kind of order. Because we, yeah, I'm trying to think. How about a favorite episode that you watched later and said, that is really good? I, I will say Midnight Blue, because uh, me and this one got to get down and get our stealth on. And... I was like, I kind of want to kiss you. Uh, is that weird? Am I cheating on my husband who left me if I want to kiss you right now? Um, but you like, were it was, very dreamy in that, too. It was, like, oh. I was like, I was like ooh. <gasps> Oh. I genuinely was um, like, I'm feeling some stuff for people. I mean, we did, you know, like, I feel like it was a great episode to solidify. Uh, and because not only that, but it's like, it, it, I feel like for Bordis, um, Kelly. W w w wound up kind of being like a surrogate big sister or like a co-parent or just like someone that Topa could you know, like she really Topa really admires her and like it's just it's, it's be able to tell her that and like she's my friend and I feel like it solidified our friendship and like we went on this mission together and like I remember we we're out in the middle of wherever that was like shooting that Disney ranch Disney ranch and like freezing <laughs> um, and you know it was just us and like we also had like a season two where we're in the prison like you know mm -hmm. like that whole thing and so like you know like when Bordis and Kelly go out you know we shake it up and, uh, they are really badasses together. <laughs> I was like, this is a fun duo. Team. This is a good uh, team. Yeah, that Absolutely. was fun. Well, and you know, and, and, and to give you praise, because, you know, I know Kelly's been getting a lot of praise for this season, but you, like, seeing Bordis in a way that you found him to be a this emotional being for the first time, I feel like we actually really saw these levels. Mm. And because Bordis is my favorite character on the show. No. Uh, hands down. Your one-liners, stop. It's, it's amazing. But it's been such a great season. It's been so fun to watch you. He's a good dad, too. You, too. He's, he's fine. He's, he's an awesome dad. It, he's the best. Best dad. I'm, a, I'm still having right. you know, misgivings about Clyden. It's fine. Yeah, Clyden coming back, I'm like, oh, he's back? I, Don't I, I, you I, dare I, insult my man. I, mean, <laughs> I love the fact that Chad... But how you dealt with that, too. <laughs> how, how Bordis was... 
like resigned to the fact, okay, he's back, but still yeah. you know, that internal a stuff. Lot of, so you're playing a lot of internal things that are awesome. And I have to awesome. go back and look at that episode again because I feel like a lot of the stuff that was happening when we were shooting didn't wind up in the the final cut. You know, like I feel like, which is fine. I, I understand like they focused a lot on the conversation between Clyde and, and Topa. But like I remember when we were shooting it, um, there was a camera over here, and I'm here, and like they're over here, and so I would have, you know, because there was I was I was doing a lot of emoting. <laughs> I was like, but that but was, red, that um, was my favorite part of the scene. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 it was, uh, it was it was good that like all that was there. Um, but I liked that it like it, it came back into bookends because you you can't you can't you know in fairness to the show and like to have any respect for the character you can't have a character say I wish you were never born and then like that's it they never come back like that that's 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 not fair. Oh, we had to apologize. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, you know, behind the scenes there was there was a lot of stabbing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Chad certainly did a good job making us not like Clyden for. for well, a bit. I mean, yeah, oh, and yeah. that's what's great. It's like it's so easy to to not like that character, but like you know, in fairness, he is just being not only just a Mocklin, but a Mocklin who was born female, who's reacting to the life that he had, and the the, you know what I mean, the, you know, like, and all of that, and that's that's. I mean, I feel like that's pretty um, like realistic. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, it's it's easy to dismiss Clyde, and he shops way too much, but because um, he always has like the fits. He's like, I was like, dude, really a new outfit, Clyde? Really? Like, but he's on the ship and he's bored. I understand, but like, it's it's you know, like if you to dig in there and like really think about like the conflict. I mean, I, I kind of equate it to, I would imagine like a a, a set of uh, you know, a couple that are diametrically opposed politically. Like one person's like a libertarian, and the other person's like a, I don't know, an independent, or like likes Ralph Nader or whatever. But I'm just saying, like, whether well, like it's easy to say, oh, Republican and Democrat. But like that would be the easiest accessible thing. But like, but they still live together and they love each other and they're still trying to work it out. And like that, that's that's better TV than you know. It's just like don't let's not like you know. Uh, poop on Clyde and so so easily because you know we're all conflict and and coexistence like we, we we have to be able to agree to disagree and live and let live in like not you know so enough said enough said yes. and he showed some great personal growth which is yeah it's a great step in the right direction sir your name where are you from question Gandalf the Wise. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Middle Earth. No, just a half crippled. No. Uh, <laughs> this thing on. Uh, so, Joe from Connecticut. I got to meet you guys yesterday. Yes, hello. Um, my question is, now we know, unfortunately, uh, Norm MacDonald has passed. And he completed everything for, for this previous season. Uh, one, do you guys have any memories? I'm not sure how often he was on set, but from what I understand, he was on set on occasion. Do you guys have any favorite memories of talking to him or working with him in any way, shape, or form? And B, do you have any clue what they're going to do with the outfit next season? Well, next season. Next season. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you no, know sorry. something I don't know? season <laughs> 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 We, and, we need a season four. And actually, unfortunately, I mean, well, so much, unfortunately. Uh, it was too soon and so unfortunate how it happened. But, you know, Yafit actually wasn't done. They just cut some of the stuff because oh, okay. obviously mm-hmm. we're not going to put yeah. anybody in there to impersonate him or do anything else. So I love that Seth you know, yeah. honored that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was very rarely on set, but I, I do just remember how gregarious and excited he was every time he was. Yeah. Um, and what a humble, fun, exactly who you'd expect human being. Yeah. And you forgot, you'd like, you'd be, it, there'd be this, like, this energy, like the one time that I was there and he was there, like there was like this energy in the other room going on. And I knew that he was over there and he was in Video Village and talking to 
John and Seth and like you just this this you just felt like this energy and then and and, and, and I was like oh fuck, that's, that's Norm Macdonald yeah, like this is legend right over there but he didn't bring all of that to you know what I mean like not like that forward it was just like it just like brought this great energy and there was this great energy such a positive person yeah and this laughter and stuff happening and like um yeah it was just really really too bad that uh you know it's life but yeah but like i remember that's what i remember like being able to feel the like the i was like what are they what are they laughing about in there i want to i want i want to be in another joke but uh but it was like you know we're over here and over there and, and you just feel it you know what i mean just like this generosity of spirit right and getting seth to laugh is very difficult Out unless loud. you're scott yeah. yeah and then you can't stop then, him laughing yeah. and it's a problem <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're shooting stop <laughs> stop it stop but yes norm could do that guys thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. Hey, thanks. Um, Manny from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How you Hello. doing? Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, Steel City. Um, I have one short question for each of you. First of all, with regards to the Mocklins, um, I know there's a lot of parallels, obviously, between, start, uh, between TNG and Orville, and I was gratified to see something that the Federation never did, the Planetary Union did, which was kick out a member. So what, what kind of redemption is possible, in your mind at least, from your perspective, for the for the Mocklins in the future, you don't have to obviously reveal. I'm I think sure. we'll just give them uh, a dirty chips uh, and get them all hooked on pornography. Like I think that. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think that's a really interesting. So, if someone asked me. Uh, yesterday, what I, what kind of storyline I wanted to see happen, and I think that that's that's worth exploring. To, to I'd like to see what Bordis's relationship is to his home world. Do you know what I mean? And and how that works. So other than just you know uh, losing um, a gender reassignment case, you know, like in. But I would love to see what his like in the same way that Isaac, you know, had like you know this relationship with his home world. I would love to see. Because now we have female Mocklins, you know, they have their sanctuary. Like, I would like to see what that's looking like. Because, again, let's not deem, like, it's, it's, too, it's, too, it's just too easy to demonize, like, the Mocklins. It's too easy to, you know, to put them in this hole. But I feel like there's more conflict resolution to discover in that. Um, Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the female Mocklin thing gave me a little bit of a Le Guin vibe, which was gratifying because I'm a big fan of hers. But um, I have a question for um, Adrian, which is um, uh, f uh, followed you for a, a long time, and it's been a roller coaster because uh, there was Wonder Woman, there was Mockingbird, and so my question is: uh, Is there prospects? Will we see you as? Oh, I, I thought you would have been a great like Black Canary or Moonstone, you know, things Thanks. like that. What um, well, is there prospects for you to be a superheroine? Well, she is a superhero. I mean, Thanks. we love Kelly. We, 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 no, we love Kelly, of course, but... I miss it. Yeah. I miss doing it. Uh, I, I do say this to everybody. I'm like, if there's one character I haven't played yet that I want to play, it's Rogue. Hmm. And I'm like, that's to happen fast. This guy is not getting younger. You know what I mean? But uh, I, do, I do miss, you know, kicking ass and, and all the stunts and all the things. And I really, really loved Mockingbird. I really loved playing Bobby. She was super fun. We love Bobby. Thanks. Thank Let's you. bring her back. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, that'd be great, or anything uh, in, in, in that vein. That would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is more of a let me know if you disagree or agree kind of thing, but I feel like... Um, your name? Where are you from? Oh, I'm, <laughs> my name's Thomas. I'm from Connecticut. Hey, Thomas. Um, I feel like for two characters that are, like, have the energy of don't want to make friends with their co-workers kind of thing. You guys get paired up a lot in a lot of shenanigans. And I think it's kind of interesting because when you two are together, you're like, all right, time to get the job done. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, no BS. Do you know why Seth does that? Or Seth McFarland? I don't know why I'm saying it. Like, I grew up with him, but... <laughs> <laughs> He's a personable guy. You know, the you I did, though, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, well, I think... A, he writes the characters, but he also sees dynamics on set, too. And I think, you know, mm. well, Peter and I, we've always kind of 
than symbiotic humans mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't. I, I don't know if it's just because they're both just no BS badasses, or if it's because of our own personal relationship, or what. Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel like everything that's written, it feels to me sometimes it's like written like a, a symphony, right? So even like the joke structures, you know, like Bordis is, you know, like a cello and Scott Grimes is, or Gordon Malloy is like a clarinet and, or like, He's no, Seth is sure. kind of a clarinet. And, but anyway, but <laughs> so it's kind of like this, and, but so depending on what needs to happen, you know, I feel like these are the two for the job. Like, so, um, and there's a, like the strength and like, I feel like there's a first and second and a second and third in command. Like there's like a, a symbiosis, you know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, we, and we just, we just kick ass and we get, we get it done. I know. I love the, I love the episode where you guys are, uh, you guys have to defend Mocklins together. And it's like literally just you guys with the natives sick. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We're, 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 we're pretty sick with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Though I gotta say also, your singing was awesome. Gorgeous. One. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, and I have to say that was not, the reason why it wasn't easy, not that it, the reason why, like what, what made it challenging was, cause the whole convert, like the whole for since, what was that episode or season one? That you were, were doing like the karaoke? Journey, karaoke? Yeah. Was that, like, I had to sing my. Yeah. She like live. It. Yeah. Like, yeah. You. I got. And <laughs> Gordon got um, to like, you know. Well, you know. Yeah. Well, Scott, he's a singer. But like, but the whole question of like, can Borders sing? Can he not sing? Can he sing? Does he sing? Does he sound like. When he sings, like, well, is, it, is it bad? Or is it like, is, it, is he a crooner? Um, and, you know, I had to, you know, figure it out. And I <clears throat> came up with this notion of. You know, English is not his first language, <laughs> nor is, you know, singing in a, a, like a human sort of traditional way. So it's very learned, right? And so, because I, the Nature Boy song, I, I I'd studied for months, like the uh, Nat King Cole rendition, and like there was all of this, boy's a boy, but like, but it's like, that's not, that's not Bordis, that's not Bordis. He has, it's very, it's efficient. <laughs> it's efficient singing. And so to make it not bad, but not good per se, <laughs> like to try to be in this middle space of, you know, that, that was, that was kind of challenging. Um, I found, I didn't know that it was going to be like that. I thought I was just going to be able to like, you know, cause I can sing, but like, but trying to s- sing, where it's like he learned maybe in his, you know, for an hour a week <laughs> for on his off time, learned how to, you know, that was a hobby of his um, to make it that. And so they make it more connected to, you know, it's all the fun stuff that we get to do when you get to spend, you know, years with a character, you have to be truthful, right? So, um, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad that was that's that's done. I would buy an album of your greatest hits. I definitely. Um, they will be on, uh, you know, Amazon. <laughs> like uh, like Bordis does uh, <laughs> Christmas songs. Uh, <laughs> Bordis, <Jingle. like, laughs> chances are, uh, uh-huh. Johnny Mathis is his greatest. The Bordis does Johnny Mathis. That's the that's the record. <laughs> I, would I would buy that, <laughs> sir. Hi guys, my name is Don. I'm from uh, Albany, New York. Uh, it's no secret that Seth MacFarlane is an avid Star Trek fan. Um, have you guys taken any inspiration from any of the previous series out there for your characters? Not so much for the. I I, I will say not so much for the characters. I grew up watching Star Trek, but I was not necessarily a Trekkie. Was and there like a there wasn't a Bordis character on the like, there's no. Yeah. Well, you were kind of like Klingon. Well, but on the original, like the uh, the, uh, the 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 William Shatner series, there was no, there was not a like you know, like a big head alien sucker. On the show, that was like later. Um, I personally well, there, draw my inspiration. There should have been on the Enterprise. There should have been a big headed alien. Well, I yes. mean, they, you can only do so much. But uh, 
I, I took a lot of my inspiration from Sam the Eagle uh, from the Muppets. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> A lot of our learning curve came from Seth. And by the way, like his parents knew that he was going to make something like this because apparently he used to he used to create the bridge in his bedroom with cardboard boxes. So they were like, obviously, this is a thing. Is this guy on the spectrum or is he a genius? Maybe. I heard Uh, he he built like an enterprise, like a like a out of cardboard and Christmas lights when he was like fourteen. So it's like it's inevitable, right? Yeah. And so this is his like baby yeah. from day one, his dream, yeah. his baby, his little boy inside of him making like you know. And not to you know sort of speak. I want to be careful about what I'm saying, but like what I respect about Seth is that you know, as an artist in the public eye, he started fairly young, you know, um, as an illustrator and with, you know, family guy and, and, and made this name, this, this, this brand, if you will, for himself 20 plus years ago. Right. And, and artists need to reinvent themselves, I believe. Like, so, I mean, and, and and it takes a lot of courage. Um, and like a lot of people will scrutinize you and, you know, say, oh, this is horrible, and like, you can't do that. You need, you're the, you're the funny guy. You gotta be funny. That's all you gotta be is funny. And like, as an artist, I, I feel uh, him trying to push himself um, to, you know, with th- his love affair with Star Trek, obviously, and, and science fiction, and, you know, really great writing and satire and all these things. But like, as an artist, to like, at this point in his trajectory, to continue to try new things and put himself out there as a dramatic actor. And like a lot of people are like, oh, he's not fine. But they're not even like, because that's, they're not seeing that this is an artist. This is someone who's trying to push themselves and push the medium and push the envelope, um, despite what public opinion wants to shape him to be, right? So like, I have an enormous respect for for that. And he's um, a very, uh, specific writer and and he's listening you know like when we're you know on we're doing take after take after take and he's like and just like make sure you get that and in there like and, and, you know, I don't mean them to sound like that but um, but but he's, his, his attention to detail um, you know he really really uh, cares you know like about all of it which is inspiring you know for someone who's been doing a, a specific kind of thing for a long time to to you know branch out and continue to not be complacent you know what I mean so I, I dig that um, I don't know if that has anything to do with the question you asked but uh, <laughs> no but it was an awesome answer thank you guys thank, thank you. you hey girl what's up hey um, my name is Sabrina, I'm from the Vegas area. Um, I am originally from California and I went to film school in New York, so kind of from all over. Wow. Um, I have two questions. The first one's probably gonna be super quick um, and then the second one's gonna probably be a little bit more involved. Um, The first one, do you guys have any idea what the official origin is of the union symbol? Was there like a discussion or? No. Or no, but I'm sure that there is some <laughs> deep meaning to it that we don't know. They don't well, tell us that stuff. There's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, there's like this yes, there's one. There's nothing half ass on the show, so I'm going like, to be like, there's probably some deeper meaning that we have no well, idea. Well, okay. I mean, I will say that look, you know, if you look at the, um, and I'm, this is me uh, pulling this completely out of my nose, um, this, the, <laughs> the, 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 the quantum like the the fins of the ship right Mm -hmm. like the back of the i mean they're all sort of related and i know that like i i i know that seth being as as specific of a person that he is that that's all thought about but in terms of what the actual meaning of it I, i don't know but i know that looking at it like i just looking at it now, I'm like, oh, that looks like the rear end of the ship. You know what I mean? And that's, it's all intertwined, so. It does, yeah. Well, there, there's 
there's an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, it's Encounter at Farpoint, uh, the pilot, and there's these creatures and their, their tendrils kind of come together. And it, it, it looks exactly like the Union symbol. If you pause it, it's like, whoa. So I, I was thinking if that had ever been mentioned or... Hmm. Like, but yeah, like you guys should really do that, like pause it and it's, yeah. So, okay, so my second question. Um, um, so, uh, well, I think there's going to be a fourth season, so yes, yes. But no matter what, um, in a fourth season, potentially, where would you like to see your characters go? Um, well, like at San Diego Comic-Con, you had mentioned, Peter, that you like text Seth at like four in the morning with like ideas. He loves that when I do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he tells me all the time. Like, he can't wait for you to text me at four in the morning when I'm... No, I'll we get, all hear about it the next day. He's like, oh, I got Peter. Well, I get, you know, I get inspired. I'm just like, you know, you have to strike when the iron's hot. But yes, I have ideas. I have ideas. I'm sorry. Do you guys have any that you would share, or? I want to see uh, an episode with, like Avenue Q, kind of like I want to see it's like do like puppets. Uh, I want a musical episode. The I musical want, like, episode is that would be one. hilarious. Um, uh, an animated episode would be awesome. That would um, be really fun. The animated yeah. series would be great. And, yeah, that. that would be really awesome. Like Adult Swim, like yeah, why animated that? series of the Orville. But my 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 my. What's hot in my mind, which is probably what I'm going to text him again tonight, is that I want to see, I want a musical with puppets. <laughs> like, like, that's what, and I'm like, why not? Come on, that's let's do that. my worst nightmare. But, like, no, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> puppets singing in space? Yes. my worst nightmare. That's what I want to watch. Uh-huh. Put a clown in there and bleh. Yeah, clown. I've watched it all, and now I want to see something new, and that's new to me. <laughs> you know what I'd like to see, and, and it hasn't really been touched on much this season and Seth and I did end up having a conversation about it because I was like the, the, the whole point not the point but what this show started on was the basis of this relationship that kind of you know obviously there's one episode left so you'll have to watch it but like to see yeah. kind of more of that uh, blossom which we've kind of lost a little bit this season I think so and then, like, Mr. Derulio pops up again and ruins it all over again. No, like... That yeah. was <laughs> funny. That was funny. Yeah. Seth that. and that is maybe... I mean, that was so funny. Oh, God. And this, and this is all Him coming in love from... with Rob Lowe. I mean, who wouldn't be, but, you know. This, this guy's brain. I mean, it's like, oh, <laughs> um, Who knows? But yeah, that would be cool. I think that, like, someone we were talking about, like, uh, like sort of a love... Uh, not triangle, but like, like circa like Dallas or Dynasty between Clyden and Bordis and and Kel- and, 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 and you, <laughs> Kelly. Like just kind like, of already happened, huh? You know, like we get busted, like Clyden. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, but I think that there's some interesting dynamic that that, that could be there without being soap opery. Yeah, you know, like because like you've been there for me. And now Clyden's back, and I'm just like, I don't love you anymore. But I love Kelly. And uh, no, but I just like, mm-hmm. or just I'm having but, these but, feelings I don't understand. Yeah, or feelings I don't know how to deal with. And we're in the simulator all the time, like, you know, playing paintball, laser tag, or something, like just spending a lot of time together. <laughs> uh, no, but in, in seriousness, like, I think that I would be really interesting, um, maybe for an episode. I don't know. I'll just go back to the puppets. That's, 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 that's. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have a puppet of Q from a, from Encounter of Far Point. I have a puppet version of Q. So. Wow. Wow. He could actually make you all puppets because he's Q. That's cool. Can I? I want the. We bat- did have puppets in an episode, the Uptown episode. Really? Uh huh. I was on the. Bridge. It was on TV, but the, I mean, Howard Berger still has the puppets. Oh right, right. Yeah, yeah. I want the bad idea bears to show up too. That's mm. okay. Go ahead. That's cool. Go to some of that. No, it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello, I'm Jack. I'm from Earth or Wakefield, Massachusetts. Uh, 30 minutes from Boston. Uh, so Jack from Earth. I like that. Can, can you turn the mic a little oh, bit sure. up so you can? Sure. Uh, so. You've seen Seth act, you've seen Seth write, and you've seen Seth direct. 
Uh, which of these aspects of his skill set do you think he does best? Break dancing. <laughs> yeah. Fourth <laughs> option. <laughs> um, that's a hard question. I mean, because he's he's very very gifted, obviously, in a lot of ways. I do love when Seth just directs because he's just. The thing is, he when he's really sitting back and just observing us and not worrying about all of the other million things, obviously directing and acting at the same time is something that I would never want to do because I think it would just be too much work. Um, he really, he's so giving and, and uh, supportive and like he genuinely trusts us in a, in a way and it's so fun to see him without the you know everything done he's like wearing a bell cap and his like bifocal glasses and you know his like sweatshirt and he's just he's just he's just one of us and it and it's really fun to see him in that environment mm -hmm. but again that's a very hard question well, so i say that you know well, i respect the challenge so mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you thank you hi uh ron from connecticut um, Adrian, I mentioned at your table yesterday that Tyra Collette is one of my all-time favorite characters. Thank you. I was wondering if you can talk a little bit about getting that role and what it was like to play her. And She's, was, oh. uh, to this day, my favorite character I've ever done, I've ever played. And uh, she changed my life because up until that point, uh, he asked about Tyra Collette on Friday Night Lights. And um, up until that point, I was the girl that they put in the swimsuit. So it was the first thing that I think legitimized me in my career. Um, I'll never forget, I auditioned that morning for Linda Lowy, the casting director. I was, it was pilot season, so I was all over the place. I was like across the city in LA. My parents were visiting, and I get a phone call that Peter Berg uh, wants to meet me that evening. And I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. I just auditioned, right? Let's just go eat something. And I remember my mom was like, I think we can make it in time. I think we can get there. I think we can try. And I'm like, oh, fine. I guess if we can get there, my dad steps on the you know, gas. We get there in time. I roll up. It was the best audition of my life because I literally walked out of there and I said, if I don't get this, I don't care. I had an acting class. <laughs> so Peter's really about improv acting. So I knew the lines, but I mean, he would sit there and he'd be like, okay, so uh, do it like you're on meth. Like, I mean, he would just like all these things and I'm like, oh, let me tap into those days. But like, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but we played for like a half hour and I didn't realize that they were testing all the other characters that day. So everybody mm -hmm. was waiting for their, their director mm -hmm. kind of, uh, preview before going and testing and I had no idea um, but we were just in there for half hour 45 minutes and I walked out and the next thing I know I was testing the next day and uh, I got the role of a lifetime how long how long before uh, after your, te your last test did you find out I was walking out like it was like we were all in the parking lot and it was crazy because we've all been in this what? room they told you together. that fast Oh yeah. That's awesome. And it was kind of hard though because we're all walking out together and at oh, this point we've all bonded because we're all yeah. sitting in the same room. Hold on a second. I know and it's like everybody's kind of getting their phone calls as we're all I walking got, out, you know I what I mean? And it's call. like, don't be too excited, don't be too excited, don't be too excited. <laughs> the other chick's right next to me. We'll just uh, uh, wow. Yes, but no, it was, it was pretty. And they called you directly? The casting? No, it was my agent, my manager. Oh, so they called the people and yeah, the people called exactly. you before you even left the building. Uh -huh. But I almost didn't get the part. I was the only person they brought back into the room. And it was because they thought I looked too mature. And Peter was like, nope, we're doing this. So again, we did like an improv acting thing in the room with the studio and that's with, what got Like me. for the suits or the producer? Mm -hmm, for the suits. Oh. Which got me the part. Because he was like, that's, that's, God, that's Tyra. That's nerve wracking. See, this is the kind of shit we have to do. It's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. And you have to prove in like two minutes what you're going to do over an evolution of years of a character where you're like, I'll never even do anything I'm doing in this room. You know what I mean? It's going to be so much more evolved and yeah. whatever. But we have to like, you know, dance for those five seconds. And it's, it's a yeah. lot of work. But thank you for that. And I was also going to ask about your experience on Wonder Woman, but I saw your reaction when it was brought up before, so if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm so thankful I got to get paid to wear that suit. 
um, as opposed to just walking around in my, you know, house. Uh, <laughs> bacon, bacon. <laughs> exactly, exactly. At least I didn't burn myself. Um, <laughs> but it was one of the biggest heartbreaks of my life. Not that we, we all knew it was getting picked up. So getting the phone call, the producers, everybody was shocked. It was just one of those things. But it's a great experience. So I got that. Thank you. Hey, girl. How's it going? Good. How you doing? Good. Thank you. I'm Bridget. I'm originally from Vermont, but now I live in New Hampshire. Um, first, I am like embarrassed that we showed up in the same outfit. I didn't really think awkward. anyone else was gonna do that. Wait, are you captain too? <laughs> hmm? Are you captain? How Hell many yeah. bars? Of D course. Duh. Well, okay, let's calm down. Commander's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the commander <laughs> like kicked ass this Yay. season. Um, so just a couple super quick questions. My first one is, um, now that Topa's organizing the first ever Orville Pride Festival, um, <laughs> that's my cosplay today. Not Topa, but she asked me to help organize it with her. Word. Um, I was wondering, would the Mocklin be invited to Pride, and would the female Mocklin Sanctuary like be the venue, if oh, they be asked to host it? Yes, yes. and I imagine all of the Mocklin's like I imagine that being like the Pride Festival in San Francisco, like where like you know, on Market Street, like, and it's just like full on, you know, every you know what I mean. And it would be definitely because that's the party place. You've seen the Mocklins dance, yeah. uh, so you know how crazy that. But all get. the Mocklins that are like, you know closeted or just suppressed or whatever they can like it's like going to fire island they can have a weekend and they just take you know they go <laughs> and, it's like, there, so and it's there. amazing you know what i'm saying and then maybe they don't go back and they just start a whole colony there and it's beautiful and it's great i like the way you think <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's awesome just like a couple other super quick questions um what season should we anticipate lieutenant malloy's sandwich coming back like how many seasons would that? that is that's great right. Sis. I was like, what happened to this sandwich? I want to. Now I like want to exhale. I want to. during that time. Made me hungry. I didn't even think like, Scott noticed. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like frozen in time. I, <laughs> didn't the machine get broken? Like, didn't like the what happened? No. No. Oh, it did. It was like, broken. Yeah. So maybe never. <laughs> like maybe we just disrupted the whole space time continuum with an egg salad sandwich. Exactly. So mayonnaise doesn't go bad in space. You can confirm that. I mean, I mean, I don't, you know, it's tricky you know how many when you of talk those about sandwiches Scott had to eat. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see like a 35th century story where kind of want an egg salad sandwich right now. The Orville, it's been abandoned for years. They're starving. They're going. They can't find anything, and suddenly the sandwich appears. That would be like in Marvel. You know what I mean? Like after the credits, like all of a sudden you just get like this little nugget, <laughs> and it's you know, oh great, some <laughs> some person in the future, or even a caveman finding right. the sandwich, being like. Hey. Hence the next uh, franchise of exactly. the, the Marvel <laughs> universe. The of the sandwich. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to make uh, that gentleman there. You'll be the last question, and uh, and thank you so much, everybody. So please proceed. <laughs> uh, hey, okay, hold on. I love your shirt. I love the Golden Girls. <laughs> I still watch reruns to this day. <laughs> Sorry. I do too. Uh, I'm Kevin. I'm from Wongford, Connecticut. Um, and uh, I was just wondering when the when Orville was coming out and it was being advertised to to us, uh, it was very much like this is the new comedy this is the new fox comedy it's from the crater family guy and like the big thing with me and a lot of people like oh this is going to be like galaxy Tw galaxy quest the tv show and then we started watching it and it kind of started like that but as it went along it became way more dramatic and way more serious and like really well written and like like i became so attached to like everything in a very dramatic way i was just wondering when you guys auditioned for the show was it pitching like okay this is from the creator family guy this is a comedy be as comedic as possible and then when you got on the show did it slowly become more dramatic or like from the get-go was it like no we're doing serious like sci-fi well it's not good I've known Seth for 13 years, so like going into it knew the the trajectory of this show, and also that was I think a misguided um, thing on on you know Fox's part. Fox's part, because and and maybe just in the interpretation of fan base, like just because it was not intended 
every time I would bring up Galaxy Quest, which by the way is a great movie, um, right? I was like, it's like Galaxy Quest. And he's like, no. He was like adamantly like, this is not going to be a Galaxy Quest. Because I think he was really adamant about the fact that this was going to be something else and something new. The problem was, it was the first, I think, of its kind, this dramedy that in space, people didn't know how to quantify it. They didn't know where to put it. So it was very confused in the beginning. But critics couldn't hate it. That was the thing about it. They're like, we don't know where to put this, but it's still good. But we kind of still want to say, you know, crap about Seth because, you know, they have a thing. Yeah. But like, you know, then they finally came around. Everybody finally came around to it. But it took a minute to find itself. And I genuinely believe this was the bigger picture Seth had all along. It just took a second because, you know, again, you're not going to give the creator of Family Guy necessarily the newest drama on television. That's, you know, that's not his, that's not his sweet spot. But this has become massively, I think, his sweet spot. I, I, I will say that it, it's always been um, in, uh, incredibly specific. And so when I auditioned for uh, Bordas, I auditioned with the scene where Bordas goes in to tell uh, Ed that he needs three weeks off for, you know, to lay an egg. And, um, and when, I, when I was preparing the audition, or the, the preparing the scene, Peter like, wanted to try to make a funny with by saying so ed asked bordis like so, so you let you, you legs and he's like yes and and uh he's like are they are they are they are they large eggs and um and and then bordis says they are quite large yes and <laughs> and that's what's funny yeah peter wanted to say they are quite large yes like i wanted to comment on it and seth being the comedic genius because comedy is math comedy is technical comedy is it's got to be right in this sweet spot and he has a thing that he calls don't put a hat on a hat um and so so in my audition which i was so grateful for you know what i mean to get a note like in like when there's producers and all these people in the room and seth is back there and his baseball cap and like his glasses that are so thick he can see the future like he's just like really? you know what I mean like he's blind as a bat I mean I was like, <laughs> like, like, poor guy he's blind. okay poor guy like you just but my, but just unassuming but 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 specific right even in the very beginning of of the like the pilot was written but he had a sense of where the the, the comedy lives right and he's like it'll be funnier if Bordis and this is what I would bump up against, you know, or as a barometer, like to, like, I'm like, let me just not be aware of the, like now entering glory hole. Like if I, if I, if I, if I know what that is and I, you know, Peter knows what it is, certainly, but like, um, but Bordis, I don't really, but Peter, like, but <laughs> Bordis, it's funnier, right? So he has a, he had a sense of like the, the ensemble, when you're doing ensemble comedy, like the notes that you play, because it's like we gotta like we gotta hit this note and then this note, and so we can get to the da that note. But if you jam up like the it, if it gets jammed up before, it's not gonna make it out. So he was very cognizant and mindful and specific about like it's where the funny lives, and so yeah, don't play into it. Just if it's there in the in the writing, it's yeah. there in the writing. Just yeah. And it'll be there. Just stay out of stay out of the way, yes, yeah, right? And so, I, but, but of course, I thought, well, I, how do I make this funny? That was my objective. But uh, it, he just like so, he has a very sense, a, a good sense of specificity in terms of like the you know like the the whole of the comedy. So um, it's been very specific from the beginning, uh, and it's then grown. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Captain. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, Richard from Las Vegas. Uh, two questions, neither of which are related to each other. 
since Seth is a huge Star Trek fan, am I going to go on Twitter in 20 years and find out how much everybody hated working with him? Is he going to actually take it that far? Yeah, and you'll be eating an egg salad sandwich. That's yeah, really good. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, the second question, Peter, is I haven't heard that term that's on your t-shirt in I'd say 30, 40 years. Oh, you know what it, it is. I know what it is. Is, is. is it for a reason you're wearing it or? Uh, it was clean. It was clean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy that like pulls laundry off the top of them, like, you know. I, you know. Oh, let's put that on. That's good. That's good. No, no. It's in, I, like, I like this t-shirt. It's a birthday present. but. I like t-shirts, you know, like it's like a walking, uh, do I have chitlins for you? Is that what you're saying? Did you dress up for a special? What do you, did you, he put on a huh? clean shirt, that's what he's saying. I, I feel like this is kind of special. I'm sorry if it's not meeting your needs, <laughs> madam. <laughs> hey. Hi, uh, Justin from Connecticut. Um, I just want to first off say thank you as a teacher for like, creating such an amazing show from the themes, the topics, and the issues that you deal with, from the writing, the acting, everything. It's just like so amazing. Um, from like you. everyone Thank from you. all ages Thank can you. appreciate Thank it. You. Like Thank you. every week I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. You two are also my favorite characters, Kelly and Bordis. Thank but my you. question yeah. though is sadly about- You're just uh, saying that because we're here. It's I about know. Scott. I, know, right? um, <laughs> I had to know, does Scott occasionally, while shooting, just switch into Steven Anita Smith and just like, mess with you guys um or like does he get goofy on he's a pretty boring guy yeah really? i know he has no personality whatsoever uh, just Are you flaccid kidding? flaccid flaccid <laughs> human being just run no head. jokes at all because <laughs> i just imagine him being just like steven just running around like <laughs> yeah that's uh, no it's kind of yeah it's kind of that's kind uh, of the truth you know it is funny it is funny actually sometimes seth will make him do steve like that's that's kind of the only time he does steve but Otherwise, yeah, he uh, doesn't really do Steve. No, no. I, I hear it every time I hear him talk. I just that's a that would make sense. Yeah. Well, it's like hearing Brian <laughs> and Seth, right? From you know Family Guy. Yeah. It's like you just you just see this little white dog. Dude. Um, but yeah, no. I uh, Seth is literally. I mean Scott. Sorry, Scott is literally the funniest person ever. And on set, call him right keeps now? us energized when it's you know. It's 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 late, you know what I mean, and we need like a little pick me up. Forget about it. He's just he's the best. You who, what's happening? I was just gonna call Scott. Oh, see what he's doing. Oh, yeah. I think I've been getting. We, we I think my few, phone's been blowing yeah, up by him. Yep. Sure. Let's see if you get Scotty. Da, 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 da. Don't he mind me. Three times. Oh, he's, he texted you already. Uh huh. He's a stalker. Yeah. <laughs> Hold That's on. another thing you need Hold to know on. about Scott Grimes. He's very stalkery. I'm FaceTiming him. I'm going to FaceTime him, too. Well, see, see who picks oh, up first. Oh, well, okay. Well, we Are can't do it at the same time. He's well, gonna pick up, you know, it's going to cross. You don't have that technology in this century. <laughs> He's not going to pick up because it's me. He never answers my calls. Well, because he knows. I know. He knows I'm setting him up for something, yep. too. <laughs> yes. He's like, I can Or he tell. might be hiding in his house. He's not sure. Come on. Hi. Hey. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're not Wayne Gretzky. You should call him. I'm going to, I'm you, FaceTiming okay. him. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Think he's going to pick up? He's going to pick up. It's Adrian. Who doesn't pick up for him? I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of funny, huh? He literally has been texting me oh, this is, I should, four times. Oh, Since you've been sitting here. I'm going to videotape you doing this. Don't you love technology? We're just going to have our own moment over here. Excuse us. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it's going to hang up soon. Oh, it oh. hung up right then. Yep. Right when my video. Exactly. Scott's a loser. <laughs> We tried. Yeah, we tried. We tried. <laughs> well, well, thanks both of you so much for spending the time with us. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We, we hope for a season four. Thank you. Super, sure super appreciate you. Okay. Super, super appreciate you. Um, yeah, seriously, thank this, you for having us here. Yeah, we've had the best time. Really, really, you know, it means a lot to just... You guys, going back to your table? you guys are the yes. guys that watch our stuff. We have pictures. If anybody wants to get pictures go, with us, go, yeah, go visit them at their table. Come yeah. see us. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 
Hi, this is Maisie Richardson Sellers, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be a legend and hit that like button, and most importantly, have fun and follow your fandom.